off a stat. Good morning. Do you like my, my more coffee voice? I have an idea for a coffee mug. I need to make that. I need to do my coffee mug design. I got to write that down. See, I have all these ideas when I'm not, when I'm uh, not trying to have ideas is when I have the ideas. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Andrew, Galaxy 10, Galaxy 10 ad, I'm guessing because it's iPhone week. Oh, let me write down my coffee mug idea. I can't tell you because you'll steal it. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, something on paper. Winged wretch, thanks for the follow. My camera's a little jacked up here. <clears throat> Got some cool stuff today. We got some things in a box that I don't know what they are. I mean, I have a general idea of what they are, but specifically, I don't know what they are. I never noticed you could how good you could see my microphone on the on the stream. I don't know why I've never noticed the big ball of of fuzz right here on the Yeti. All the things. It's not actually a huge unboxing, but we have a few things, um, and I think only. I mean, I know what some of it is, but I'm, I haven't seen it. Born a box. Good afternoon. Fifteen minutes. Can't open it that quick. I go. I can start opening some things here in a few minutes once everyone gets in. But I, I probably won't have the big stuff opened quite in time. You know, we gotta we gotta milk this a little bit. You know, we gotta go at least an hour for the stream. You know, it's gotta be worth my while to. To, to get everything set up and come over here. Gotta get at least an hour in. <clears throat> at least before we go. go. Yeah, so speaking of catch it later, y'all will notice that I have the chat in the Twitch stream now because so many people would just like to see these replays on uh, YouTube afterwards and they want to see what I respond to in the chat. So I have that popped into the screen again. So smoke meat, oof. Yeah, I might just come over later. I can get there by the time you're done, probably. We'll work on that. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll be posting every the full content of every stream over to YouTube from now on. I'll just straight up export it. I'll take the little intro screen out. Like I do that intro because you gotta give it 105 pounds, damn. Oh, that's awesome. I gotta give it three minutes to get through the ad stuff before I really start. Um, the stream so i'll strip out like the starting soon screen and then i'll just dump the whole stream over there to the um to the youtube channel because i've gotten a bunch of feedback that people you know obviously for whatever reason can't watch twitch either timing or working or actually have a job unlike me um and um want to see what the content is so like cool i can do that and it helps to have that chat show up in the window so does it put the uh does it put the emojis in chat put panatic hype in there let's see yeah it does cool yeah i mean you can't see it but i didn't know if it would like actually dump that over there into the into the chat or not so Whew. everyone have a good weekend we good i finally had a weekend at home where i did nothing all weekend we swam for two days in a row um which i haven't been in my own pool in like a month so that was good to have um so that was fun. Had a, a nice, enjoyable, relaxing weekend at home. So I've been off to a good start this week so far. Got a bunch of shipping out. Um, that reminds me, I need to update the Kickstarter Burtons. We're into the low 500s, maybe almost a 550, something like that. I'll be up to like 650 um, Wednesday, Thursday time frame, something like that. I need to throw that up out update out there. I haven't checked my email today. Brian was going to send a spoke pen update last night, but I'm not sure if he did. He's been super tied up, which is some of the delay stuff just happens. You know, we got a lot of things going on. So um, I haven't opened email since like five o'clock yesterday afternoon. And now that I've said that out loud, I'm kind of dreading that. I don't know what's in my inbox. So email is my enemy. So it just takes some time. Yeah. So can you play Call of Duty on mobile? That's what Andrew got the same ad. And I'm like, okay, Galaxy Note 10, I get it. Like it's iPhone time, so right, they gotta, they are, they're advertising against that. That makes sense. Can you actually play Call of Duty well 
on there. Like, I don't understand how Fortnite runs on mobile. Like, I can't imagine that that's a good thing. Got my orange spoke pen. Love it. I don't know why I got my orange spoke pen. I love it. Radial symmetry. That got auto-modded for sexual content. So I'm glad my spoke pen is very sexy. But no, I appreciate that. Radial symmetry. Glad you got it. And I love the dang pen. So can anyone play with on screen? I suck. Oh, so, okay, so here at Radial Symmetry, it says what got dinged. It's the phrase pen dash I was sexual content. <laughs> so I'm very, I love Twitter, Twitch, uh, Twitch auto, auto mod. They're pretty good. Rewizzles, woo, thank you so much. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thanks for the sub. You are awesome. Speaking of auto mods and subs, this Friday at 4 o'clock, we'll talk about this a bunch this week is the relay fm stream on twitch i think is their channel just relay fm um i need to check i need to verify the channel and yours truly will be the moderator for six hours of goodness i should mute this because it's just doing it here <laughs> right pins are very sexy relay fm is that the correct channel yes so it will be relay fm so go over there and follow that. I will be um, I will be the moderator for the charity stream marathon. So that will be fun. Um, God, every time I remind, every time I do this, every time I talk, I remember. Oh, I have to go accept the 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 thing. So let me go do that because Steven's texting me. I don't know how I get anything done. Y'all watch me. It's like I don't even get it. I don't even get it. Join. So we got all the mods. Casey, Julia, Carrie, Mary, and I, Mike. Kathy. Lots of mods. Lots of mods. Should be good. Sorry, I'm just going through the thing that I should have looked at yesterday. Yeah, perfect. So yes. Oh yes, yes, except the thing. <laughs> There's Kathy. Kathy will be in there. I was just taking your name in vain. Uh, I'm gonna call you though first. Um, I saw your name, so that just means I have to call you now, right? Is that how it works? See, I see everything on the internet. All right, let's open the first thing. Let's open the first thing. So we got three thing, three packages to open today. Um, let's do this. This first. This is this is very interesting. Let me. Uh, let me open it, then I'll turn on desk cam. Because this has addresses like all over it because it came from Canada. So that requires like 50 stickers in like a baseball sized box, right? I mean, that's just the way Canada is. This was something that a friend said, hey, I would like to make this for you. Oof. So let's see, I would email you and then just call randomly. Okay. All right, so let's, here. We'll, we'll, um, we'll desk cam it from here. Let's see. Whoa, there's a box of paper. All right. So my friend said, hey, I do this thing on the side just for funsies and I would like to make you one because I've seen you using ink stamps He's like, I would like to make you Let's take this letter out. I don't want to give up his opsec because I don't want people contacting him until he gives me permission. So he made me, oh, it's going to be hard to see. He made me a giant ink bottle stamp that he carved himself. Um, I chose the Sailor Ink Pot because I love the design. Even though it's not the most functional design, you know it's a Sailor Ink Pot. And it shows up the color as well. And the cool thing about it, what you'll be able to see when I stamp it, is right here is the little pin attic logo. It's the little pin syringe right here. So you won't be able to tell it completely in there, but he was kind enough to send me a an ink stamp, I mean an ink pad too. So we got the ink pad here. Let's see if I can make this work. I'm assuming this is the ink pad. So what's funny is my stamp is much bigger than my ink pad. I'm guessing this is my ink pad. Is that what this is? Oh no, this isn't an ink pad. 
This is a deck of cards. He told me this was coming too. Oh, that's dope. I love playing cards. Like playing card design is such a cool thing. So I didn't bring my own ink pad. So we'll uh, we'll test this out when I get home. I don't know that I have an ink pad to fit the size of this. So like, okay, so here's, can we do, so there's my iPhone and there's the, there's the ink bottle. <laughs> I just call these an ink pot because that's what I've heard them called a bunch and it's kind of the shape of a pot. <laughs> yeah, I can dab. I have an ink pad at home. So this isn't an ink pad. I thought it might be, but it's uh, actually a deck of cards. So isn't this thing gigantic? How hilarious is this? So I need to get Anna's big ink pad. What's the big uh, color pad thing? What's the large size one? That's what I'm going to need to do my color testing on. God, this is so cool, isn't it? I, I'm really, I can't believe how big it is now that I now that I actually have it. Let's see what my card says. Hope you enjoy the new bottle, Swatch Stamp. I've included a deck of cards that I've designed in the past. I'm excited to see the stamp in use. Cheers. That is too cool. God, he designed these cards too. That is just redonkulous. Do you want me to open the cards? Do you want to see the cards? Oh, it's got a little strippy thing here. I'll start keeping these. Hey, Jesse. Look at my ink testing pad. It's crazy. Pretty happy with that. Ooh, this is these are limited edition cards. See that? 228 out of a thousand. That's cool. Yeah, and I didn't think to bring my ink pad over here to test it. So we'll do some testing when I get home. I'll put something up on Instagram or something like that. It's ginormous. These cards are almost too pretty to open. So I'll tell you what he, who he is if, if he gives me... Uh, yeah, I keep my knife in my backpack now most of the time. If he gives me permission to um, to to share his name, I will. I, I'm I just haven't asked, so I like to be sure because it's not someone um, would normally know. So here's the card backs, and there's the card designs. Hey, Crash Fuzzy, glad you made it. So we're just doing a little unboxing here. So yeah, these are pretty fantastic, right? Like these are right up my alley. They look like my Tokaido sets. Let's see. Yeah. Hearts. Hearts. Clubs. Spades. These are brilliant, right? Standard card design. These are not from luxury brands. I'm open that up in a minute. I got a big box from them. Um, I know one thing that's in it, but I don't, it's a larger box than I imagined. So it could just be one thing or it could be more stuff, but no, this is from a, a friend. So once I, um, once I clear it with him, um, he may not want his name released. I think he mentioned before to kind of keep it, you know, he doesn't do this professionally. He just does it on the side. So yeah, this deck of cards is sick though. Love it. I can't get over the size of this ink stamp. I can't believe I forgot my ink pad. That's dumb. It didn't even cross my mind, honestly. So I can't necessarily say that I forgot it if it wasn't in my head in the first place. All right, let me get this stuff out of the way. All right. Second thing is a Kickstarter project I backed. And I like I kind of forgot about it because I already have the product or a version of it. But I do that a lot, right? If I, I'll get a review sample of the product and it's kind of obvious when I like really like the product cause I'll just go ahead and back it myself. So you can like tell the products like I totally love because I'll just go back up myself or I'll just review and say, hey, I like the product or don't like the product or whatever it is and then kind of not back it on the down low. Um, 
This is the Modern Fuel retractable pin. My box got smashed in shipping, but it's okay. Uh, so I met Andrew uh, Sanderson. Is that his name? I think it's Andrew Sanderson. I know it's Andrew. So yes, a friend of mine made the ink stamp. And I'll I'll email him when I'm done with this um, and get some clarification on if we can if we can do some more. Um, I met Andrew at the Dallas Pen Show. I'd already backed his. He does modern fuel designs. You've probably seen it on Kickstarter. I've I've supported him for years in his various iterations of his products. So, um, super cool guy. I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna have a table at the Dallas Pen Show this year. Sorry, life life's off today wife text um so okay i just noticed something sorry we have to the desk cam is overriding the chat cam so if you just tuned in hmm. so when i launched the desk cam the chat cam went away so when you if you just tuned in I put the chat cam on the screen now because I've gotten a lot of people wanting me to just post these videos, these streams straight over to YouTube so they can watch later. And the chat helps have the context context of that. So it looks like we got it now. I don't know why that wasn't coming in or maybe I wasn't paying attention enough. Anyway, back to Andrew Sanderson. Modern Fuel, he will be at the Dallas Pen Show this year, I think with his own table. So I back, I have the pencil. I use the pencil frequently because I bought it with a nine millimeter lead mechanism, which is not something that I do normally. Like nine, like I'm a 0.5 uh, mechanism guy. So when I had the chance to back the pencil, I bought the nine just because it's like a sketch one, but it's hard to tell how nice this is um, in just this this image, this video, because it shines so much. You need less direct light, but it's really just a long, sleek, really nicely weighted uh, Fisher Space Pen refill, but I think this one can be modified to fit some other things, the barrel's certainly long enough. So this probably has the full Parker extension. Let's see, how does it twist out? Oh, it's got a front end, front end. Wow, you can't even see the seam there. I wouldn't have guessed that. You, there's no seam to be to be seen. But um, let's see. This feels like it's got to have the full Parker job on it. Yep. So it actually has an extended, his own cap extension on there. But I think the standard uh, Parker mechanism would fit um, this. So this comes down to right here. So yeah, it's about, it's about a quarter, maybe a third of an inch extension. So he's made his own is all that is. So that means it'll fit your Parker, other Parker refills. As opposed to the wing back, which I reviewed, um, it's not deep enough to fit that full length. So this is really cool the mechanism. I think I just need to break it in a little bit. Like it keeps sticking a little bit every other thing, but it's good. Instructional videos. Sorry, I'm just looking at the cute little instruction card, cork pin sleeve. So yeah, this is cool really nicely done i'm guessing this is black yep 1.0 millimeter black that's the stock fisher refill which is pretty good it's very juicy i always switch these out to the blue and the fine this is a black medium i switch to the fine blue so he sends it with a clip so there is a clip option for this um, I tend to not use clips on these type of pens that don't just have it built in. Just preference, like if I want a clip, I'll just get it built in, like the spoke pen or like a Lamy pen, you know, they're built in already. Um, like the Kovacos have additional clips, I just tend not to use them just because they slide and it kind of bugs me 
more than I get the value out of actually having the clip onto the pen. He also provides, I guess, a bit of um, like scotch bright to roughen this up. I'm guessing that's what this is. I don't, there's no mention. Let's see. Oh yeah, that is. Care, if you prefer the shiny new, if you prefer the shiny new look, use a piece of scotch bright pad to refinish the outside of your pen. Simply wrap the pad around the pen, apply pressure with your thumb and forefinger, twist the pen through the pad, starting at the tip and ending at the clip. So it does kind of buff and polish the pen. We do that for some of the spoke pen parts. We'll put them on a lathe and spin them around the scotch bright. I'll tend to just let this work you know, however I'm gonna bang it around and, and get its character for what it is. I probably won't go and scotch bright on top of it. Um, you know, something like the Y Studios where they have an exterior finish above the brass, like that's cool to if you wanna wear that off to see it through. But something like this, I'm just gonna let it wear naturally. It's just gonna, I'll feel better about the product um, if I do it like that, as opposed to just doing it um, you know, making it look a different way manually with the with the Scotch Brite. So, very cool. And we sometimes will. Uh, I know Brian was talking about shipping Scotch Brite with um, some of the spoke pins. I don't know if we've ever decided to do that or not. Just you, just to kind of um, do it around the grip section a little bit. That's what we use it for, or the raw aluminum barrels. All right, so we got a stamp, we got a pen, I'm gonna drink water, and then we're gonna open a big box from Luxury Brands. I know they're sending me a Waldman pen, so have any of y'all used a Waldman pen before? I was asked about these at the pen show in San Francisco, and I had never used them, so I talked to Luxury Brands and they sent me some to review, so I know that's in there. Outside of that, I'm not sure what else is in here. My suit pen is generally a ballpoint of some point of some kind because I'll hesitate to take a fountain pen because I generally won't know I won't be able to control the usage that I have of the pen whether I'm going to loan it or what paper I'm going to write on so I'll generally take a ballpoint um, with me <clears throat> and that just depends you know the barrel just depends so Here's the big box. So I'd probably use a Jetstream or a Fisher Space pen. That's generally mine. Like I don't use the Retro 51 for that because I want a closed tip also, just in case of accidents. So it's something capped and usually a ballpoint. Sometimes a gel pen, like I'd use my spoke pen for that for sure. You know, just something, something capped and something non-fountain, so. So I told Luxury Brands I'd email them when I got this box in. I've had it sitting here for like three days waiting on this stream, and I forgot to email them. Like I said, I hadn't checked my email in days. Days. All right. Return label. We need to keep that. So a lot of these pens I get are loaners, like rightfully so. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. So Luxury Brands... We'll talk about luxury brands in a second. Two. I think they wanted me to review Waldman. What do you think? Three. Four. <laughs> Five. <laughs> you think they wanted me to uh, to put some Waldman Waldman on the site? <laughs> <laughs> and then Nebula Note uh, notebooks. Whoa, you can't see that. There it goes. And you can see my camera in there. You can say hi to Wally. Lee is awesome. Twenty eight. You are awesome. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. So yeah, let's uh, let's go through these one by one here. There's different styles, different things. So um, yeah, subtle hint, right? So, good grief. Let me see if he wrote me a note on here. So yes, luxury brands, let's go over them. They're the mostly known for me is they're the platinum distributor in the US and the Noodlers distributor in the US. So that's what they're most known for. Um, 
right now. Then recently they picked up Waldman. They are the Colorverse distributor. They are the Stiff Flexible Notebook distributor. And I'm sure some other things I'm missing. Like if you went to their website, you could probably find it out. So let's see, Bryce did not put a note on here. But I know which, I, so they sent me five Waldman pens to check out. One of them I know I get to review. It's this one called Eco Barley. This looks like a ballpoint, I think, at least by the tag on there. So I get to give that one away. And then I uh, then I get to uh, review these other ones or do whatever I want with and then return them back. So let's see what we got. Okay, so this, I'm just going to, I don't know what any of these, yeah, stiff flexible. I don't know what any of these mean. So let's see if the camera picks it up and we can look at the model numbers online too. It's not coming in. This is the etc. pattern gold medium. There it goes. Can y'all read that? Maybe. Not really. So X E T R A extra pattern. It's a weird name. I don't know what any of these look like. The packaging is mega nice. Look at these boxes. So this is like a fancy, I don't know if this is leather or what, but it's got this nice clip here. I'm guessing it's ooh, nice. This is a very nice box. Um, does Aurora do boxes like these? Aurora's are a little bit bigger, I think. Um, so, so this is the, this high end writing. <laughs> I like this. So Waldman puts this note in the box. Bennu, yes, that's another one they just picked up. So, let's see if this, can y'all read that? This high end writing instrument has a cap with screw system. Please do not pull the cap. <laughs> so this is from Waldman. They, um, have added that in there. So I'm, you know what? Let's pull up some Waldman information. I genuinely don't know anything other than, Hey, that's a brand I've seen it before and they look nice, but I don't know. Like, is this a German brand? That would be my guess. Sorry for the sniffles today. I've been, uh, been super crazy with allergies. Like I had to get like a box of Kleenex just to bring up here. All right. So I just want to know like, yeah, made in Germany since, what did it say? Made in Germany since 1918. So this is a very classy, like looking at pens sometimes you can just see like their country of origin. This looks like a German pen to me and it is. So that'd be my guess. So this is super nice. Um, like I don't have all the product descriptions, so this is an extra pattern. Um, I don't know. It's a screw system. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make the the insert mad here. So this is really really pretty. All right, let's see if we can show this a little bit better. So that's a two tone nib, which is not coming through in the stream, but you can see kind of that top section's gold, and then there's a little bit of. Um, silver running through like the middle there kind of like an inverse of a sailor nib it's not really picking it up at all so um metal section it's a great size it's a little bit smaller and thinner than say i don't know like a pelican 600 this is probably like between a pelican 400 and 600 size wise but it's got some weight because it's got a metal cap i'm guessing this is a 14 carat nib what's 750 no 18k 18k medium nib super pretty nib the waldman made in germany around the section here um, needs to be centered. That's going to drive me insane. I'll tell you that right off the bat. <laughs> um, boy, I wish this was coming in clearer. But if you're holding the pen, if you're writing with the pen, you can just see like the beginning of the Waldman name here around the band. It's not going to pick up in here, is it? There it is. But the nib is centered there and that's like off centered that's going to drive me crazy it does look like a faber castell 
that's more that what it looks like than anything the cap posts obviously on this pin but you can tell it's, it just makes it gigantic it's it technically it's designed to post but in functionality you would want to post this it's just way too back heavy but like this it feels great Let's see if it ships with a cartridge nope no converter no converter oh it might be under the box here so we'll see what's in there i love how they put the little fake uh the little fake refill uh cartridges in here just for like a placeholder let's see if there's a converter in the box and i'll also see if this i'll have to see if this threads differently but basically the w it says waldman made in germany around here and it's basically lined up with the w and waldman which is which I'm going to fixate on because that, that's something that bugs me. That's got to square up better. So we'll see if it's a different stage threading. Um, it doesn't look like it is. So not a deal breaker, but like that's something I noticed immediately. Like that should, should be different. So yeah. All right, let me see what else is in the box here. Oh, I'm trying to snap this cap. These metal on metal caps, I want to snap. The clip is very strong, very nice. Little Waldman logo. Their logo is subtle. You can't really see it on here. Let's see. All right, so there's a box of cartridges. There's no converter that ships with this pen. Hey, Blaine. So let's see what this price point is. Waldman. Uh, what model? I don't really know how to. S Xterra pattern. X E T R A. All right. Mm. Trying to get a 340. Does that look right? Let's see. Ah, my connection was interrupted. Where'd it go? Which for a gold nib pen, that's certainly in the ballpark. So yeah, it looks like the gold nibs are in the 340 range and the steel nibs are like in the 180 to 200 range. So this one's probably in the 340 range. I'll have to nail down the pricing when I when I look it up. I'll show you the stamp again when we're done. It's really cool. It's worth seeing again. So it gives you a little cleaning cloth, I'm assuming for the cap, and then a warranty card you can send in. It would be nice if they gave you a converter on a $300 pen. Like I will always argue for that. Like it should be part of this pen if you're spending that kind of money on it. Yes, yes, you agree with me, I'm assuming. I'm just going to say that you agree with me. But honestly, good-looking, sharp fountain pen. Traditional, traditional German style, uh, like even supposing was saying, very Faber-Castell, classic German-looking pen. Been around for a long time. So I'll be anxious to get that tested out and reviewed. Or, like, I don't know if I'll get to review all of these, or have time to review all these or if i'll just do like a quick one post with short highlights of each of these pens oops i should put this i have to send all these back so i need to make sure i get all the uh all the parts back i gotta put it back in its little pen condom there you go you're protected now buddy don't go making any pen babies without me knowing So I will have, uh, there will be a mention of that. It's, there's, it's, it's pointless to not sh have a converter with a pen of this price point. It, it just defies all logic. Okay, this one is the Precieux. Let's see, if I, did I get that right? 
You can't see it. Too bad. P R E C I E U X. Pressure G F. Let's see what we got here. Same box, same setup. That's true. I wouldn't mind pin babies. Ooh, this one's fancy. So this one's same general idea as the last one. Um, thank you, Love Loveless. I really appreciate the sub. So this has like a, um, what do you call this pattern? Not guilloche, but um, like parquet, like a parquet court type of pattern. And this is shaped, it's got the end shapes. The first thing I think when I see shapes like this on this type of pen on the German market is Mont Blanc. And this is just great looking. Like I love the shape and feel of this pen. It's a little bit heavier than the last one. Then they, I really, how do you pronounce X-E-T-R-A? I'm gonna type that in just so you can visualize this. How do you pronounce this word? X-E-T-R. I mean, it's hard not to say extra. Zetra, Z French, Zetra. Um, but this is super nice. And this one has a fine nib. This might be like Cassetra. <laughs> this might be, this is, this is the early favorite. I've only opened two and the other one was great. This is super nice. This one feels awesome in my hand. And it has a fine nib, also an 18 karat gold nib. So I'm assuming this is in that same price point. We'll figure out, we'll sort out all the prices when I go to review them. I really kind of dig this one. Look, this one comes with a fancy converter. So I wonder what the deal is here. Like I wonder how much more this pen is. Now I need to go look it up because it's gonna bug me. This has the metal ended screw, this is like the fancy converter where the last pen had zero converter even the barrels thicker and heavier this has to be a more premium pen i'd be surprised if this one wasn't more expensive um so it has the metal parts converter which is great this is what it should have for this price point have this threaded in threaded converter um i am very impressed with this model so far so let's go look up see how much so this one's about the same price then. 250 euros is probably in that low 300s US dollars range. If this is the same price, maybe that other one's just missing the converter. Let's see if there's any sterling notes or marks on this one. I don't see any markings on this one. Let's see what else is in the bag, in the box. Same stuff in the box, cartridge, cleaning cloth. Um, let me look this one up. I am super liking this one so far. Definitely leader in the clubhouse. Pressure. Yeah, so this one's more, which makes sense. Let me see a US price. Looks like this is like a $400 pin, 460. This is an Apple Baum conversion. Sorry, I'm looking at the, um, oh, that's a ballpoint. There's a, so many varieties here, it's hard for me to nail it down. Okay, so that is this one. I'm just trying to get a ballpark here just to kind of, extra 200 pressure 250, okay. So ballpark $100 more. I mean, in my initial look, this one feels like $100 more. The other one should still have a converter, even if it's not the fancy metal converter. I'm, I'm digging on this one. Like this would be the one ballpoint. Okay. I'm not getting any consistency on pricing. 
so I'll look at it a little bit more. This one's definitely, let's just say this one's $100. If the other one's $340, this one's probably like a $450 pen. And that seems right. Like it feels a little bit more substantial than the other one, which the other one seemed like the the lower end fabric castell, and this one seems like the higher end fabric castell. So that's good. I'm I'm kind of digging it. Sorry, this is bugging me now, like the, the pricing being all over the place. But it was noticeably heavier and more substantial and obviously has the fancy converter. So I could tell this was going to be a little bit more expensive than the previous one. Just from the standard price points. Um, like I noticed it immediately in the feel. Yeah, 18 karat gold. 18 karat gold nibs on both of these first two. So the X, did we decide how to pronounce that? Zetra. Zetra and the Pressure are both 18 karat gold nibs so far. That's what we have. All right. There's two. All right. This one I'm going to get to give away. This is a ballpoint. It's the Eco, this one I can pronounce. It's the Eco Barley Ballpoint. Let's see what this is. Ooh. <laughs> Being the Karan Daesh Ecuador fan that I am, this is, the, this is the first thing I think of. I'm sure they, Waldman probably like hates like being compared instantly. But this is, this is your fancy barley corn with the engravable barrel super hard to see see even supposing gotta go have a good one this is really nice this is your cron dash ecuador style ballpoint pen which you know i like let's see what, i don't know what their refills are so parker refills waldman generic 608 this looks like a schmidt um which would make sense. Schmidt ballpoint refill. This is very nice. Feels good. So if you're a fan of the style of the Ecuador's that Cron Dash makes, that's exactly what this is. So I'm going to get to give this guy away, which is very nice. Solid click mechanism. Very thuddy. I'm digging it. All right. So stay tuned for that. We'll give that in a way in a few weeks. I've been writing out my schedule. I've started to write up my schedule for giveaway. So I know I have today. We did the Moonman from last week's review. Next week, we have a special one coming up for my good friends at Pensachi. You want to be around for this one. They're doing it right. They're going big. All right. So that was the Eco Barley. I'll be giving that one away in a couple of weeks, probably around the time I do these reviews. So within the next month. Like I can't just jump right into these reviews. So this is the, it's either Commander or Commodore Black Lacquer. So this is CMDR Black Lack Sizzle Boot. Got it? That's what pin this is. Commander Black Lacquered Steel Broad. Sound like a good guess? I think that's a good guess on my part. Good, good job by me. All right. Well done on the boxes, Waldman. Very, very fancy. Very nice. Oh, wow. This is a monster. That is cool looking. Like, you, this usually isn't my style of pen, but when you get it in hand, this is very cool. This is like Pelican 800 size. Um, It's heavy. It's obviously all metal. It's not too heavy so this has i'm guessing this might be a steel nib it looks like a steel nib it's broad it's got a ton of tipping i don't know if we can see that on here kind of hard to see but it's a big broad nib um i'll have to look this one up i'm guessing this is a steel nib because it's not marked otherwise but this is a big beefy pen and it's got a it's got a, a concave grip section here so it's kind of 
got a good feel in it. It's a heavy pen. Like this is a full, full metal barrel going on here. Let's see if you get a converter. No converter for you. Only the most expensive pens get converters. You're just slacking. You doesn't don't deserve a converter. This one would be. It's designed to post, but we're talking nightmare level. We're talking coned giraffe level here. When you post this, sorry, I can't get it in the camera. So, there's the the posting of this pen. That's just not going to happen. No one in their right mind is going to post it. Um, but it's completely. Um, it's completely comfortable to write with. Maybe a little back heavy, but not really. We'll see. We'll play around with this one and see. It's an impressive looking pen. All of these pens are very impressive so far. The build quality is really nice, and I love this look here. This pinstripe metal. So like I said, I'm going to have to do my research on all these model numbers and the price points, and we'll figure them all out, and I'll get them tested. But they're really nice. I can completely see myself. Look how cool. You can see the camera in there. Really nice. Wally's looking at you. That's pretty cool. All right, so this is, I'm guessing this one's, what did we just say, Commander? We'll see if that's even the real name of it. Looks nice, though. Very impressive from Waldman. Um, not a lot of aesthetic. It's, this is like, you know, one base design, you know, black and silver, and we'll do it in all different shapes and styles. I guess that's their aesthetic, you know, very classy German look. All right, last one is the Tusk PVD Gold F. We'll see. Let's see what we got. Fancy box again. Great box. Oh, as a not a gold guy, if you can make me say ooh on your gold pen, you've done a pretty good job. This is sharp because this is like, I can't tell if that's a smoky gray or a smoky brown, but it goes with this color gold cap very, very well. Pelicans, Pelicans are the madmen with the colors. This is really pretty. Like this is not my style. Like, which is fine. That doesn't mean, like, I can't say, like, this is a great-looking pen, because it kind of is. Like, look at that. This is just really, really sharp. Yeah, these are just the abbreviations on the stickers. I'm just making fun of them. Who knows what the real names even are. This is uh, really nice. I think this pen will do very well. I don't know how much this pen is. This is probably one of the 340 ones. This is an 18-karat gold pen. It is beautiful. Like if I was into like these colors, I would be all over this because it just it plays off each plays off itself really really well. No converter, rip. Not even I don't even get a fake I don't even get a fake cartridge insert for this, which is fake cartridge in. This is the one you have, Jesse. Yeah, I'm impressed by this one. I am impressed. Yeah, not even a fake. Not even a fake converter for this one. Nope. Same same stuff in the box. Um, yeah, I could see this in sterling silver as being like a great pen. I mean, I think this is a great pen as it is. I am inordinately impressed with this one. Okay, I want to show you all something. And you're not going to be able to see this. You're going to have to wait till the review. Oh, it's not on this one. It's on the cap. Their engraving is actually squared up on this cap with the clip here so the engraving is equal here as opposed to off kilter no this pen is sterling it's crazy it's nice yeah for something that's not my style something that like I would not have picked up on my own um, to test out this one is very impressive so that um, parquet quartz one and this one are my two favorites so far. So these will probably be the focus of my review, probably because they're the most different. The other two are kind of similar, just big and bulky and standard. And I don't know, it's just really, really nice. Oh, and of course, the, I picked the ones with fine nibs, which I'm, I'm good with. So yeah, this one, uh, this one's something here. This is, 
this one might be a thing. I can't, uh, I can't quite put my finger on it, but this one, this might be a thing. Hmm. Hmm. Anytime I'm stumped, it's good. Hmm. Let's look this one up. I don't know if I can. All I have is abbreviations. Waldman Tusk. So it is the Tuscany. Waldman Tuscany. Oh. So, okay, and it is a rose gold with an 18 karat gold nib. This one is on jet pens and it's $408. Should come with the converter. I'm gonna start yelling at people. The cur converter costs you like a dollar. Put a converter in your $400 pen. It's not a deal breaker, it's just stupid. Sorry. I am. I'm impressed with this one. Alright, see you, Crash. Thanks for hanging out. I'm. Hmm. 400 bucks. Maybe. Maybe. So I'm looking now. They don't have the parquet one with the rounded ends that I like. So that's the one we got to figure out what the price is. But that one will be most expensive. That'll be in the $500 range, I'm certain, just based on all these other ones. I guess it's no. Oh, so you can get this one that I just showed you in a steel nib for $208. That seems pretty good. All right, so that's my introduction to Waldman and I'll be anxious to uh, get these tested out and, and try it out. Maybe I'll try them on these Nebula Note pads. Oh, these are Tomoe River 52 GSM. Wow, this is solid for Tomoe River. This binding must be very thick and taped so this is probably something else that uh, luxury brands is carrying now they've really ramped up their goods uh, no doubt in part by the success of platinum like uh, they've a uh, luxury brand as platinum is gone luxury brands is gone too which is cool it's cool to see so they're good I deal with Bryce over there uh, the most he's a good guy and I always see them at uh, pen shows they're good people to, to hang out with and talk to so Yes, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll try some Nebula Note with my Waldman pens, and we'll just do the full luxury brands pimp job when I go to review them. I'll just have to figure out how many of these I'm going to re review and if I'm going to bulk them together, and then I'll have the ballpoint to give away as well. <laughs> Kimmy, you're a little late to the party, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna do over the first thing that I opened because it's so rad. I think it's worth y'all seeing again, um, and that's this stamp. <laughs> just kind of mind boggling. So I had a friend make me an ink bottle stamp, and you can't really see it yet, but you can get the shadows just right. You can see that he hand carved the material for, this is like based off a sealer, sealer, sailor inkwell, ink pot, ink bottle, whatever you want to call it. I call them ink pots because they look like a pot. Down here in the corner is the pen Attic logo. And I'll be able to fill these in with like the colors of the inks and you can see how big it is like like there's my pocket knife it's this is thing is like three by four I don't know maybe not that big but it's at least it's 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 big so I'll be testing this out I'll put it on sorry I was just looking at the the thing to tell me what it is here what's funny I'll put it on Instagram this afternoon and then I'll find out if he wants me to say who it is that made this for me. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. So I have some uh, archival ink that I use for the stamps at home. So we'll test this, see how it goes. Boom. Knit Squid, thanks for the follow. But he also designed these playing cards which are pretty wild. So yeah. Salty Scott, thank you for the follow. So that's show and tell for today. Gang. I'm uh I'm pretty
pretty pumped about this. Love those playing cards too. So yeah, so I got the I ordered that set of bottle different bottles shapes and they're teeny tiny. They're about that big around. They're like barely bigger than a quarter. They're like maybe like a 50 cent piece or a dollar coin and you just can't get a lot of color in them. The shape looks good. They're cool little add-on stamps for notebooks. But if you're gonna do like a swatch card, like a coloring card or something, you want a bigger stamp. Now I'm gonna have to get the bigger coloring notebook for this for this monster, but I will enjoy this a whole lot better. So um, hopefully my my stamp, I'll be able to tap around there good enough to get it nice and coated before I stamp it down. Oh, you can make your stone, do your own uh, carving. I'm not that talented. That's why I get someone else to do it for me. <laughs> but I think those own carving stamps are cool. Like for an ink bottle, that would be pretty cool. Like I could do something pretty basic, you know, like an, an Oroshizuku bottle like you could do. That would be fun to do. Um, and if I like this, I'm gonna have to try to find like the gigantic archival. Schedule for streams is 10 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday mornings. I need to add that to the Twitch homepage of my channel. So every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and I'll usually go one or two hours just chatting. And then sometimes I'll switch over to play a game if I have time, you know, just to hang out a little bit more. Um, I don't always have time to to play a game. But like today, we might play No Man's Sky. I said I wasn't going to play Borderlands, but they have this cool Twitch integration on uh, that I've been watching. So I might play Borderlands, but we'll probably do No Man's Sky because that's just a fun, chill game. Is that the same person Mountain of Ink got hers from? I have no idea. I don't think Kelly's are this big. I think Kelly, um, like I tried to get the ones that Kelly had, but the ones I bought were smaller and hers are larger. I like the larger size ones. The small ones ended up being a waste of money, I think. Like they look good on my desk, and but it cost me like 50 bucks for a set of six. And they're, they're really about that big. Like they're just not what I wanted. And I, that was my fault. i not reading the description well or not understanding what the size of them was. So, yeah, hers are perfect. Hers are ideal. Like, they're just the right size. So, you need you need a decent size. Yeah, I got mine from a shop on Etsy, and I thought it was the same shop, but I kind of think it's not. So, I can find the link. I, I don't know it off the top of my head, my head but it was from Etsy. And then I think the person was in Thailand, maybe Singapore, um, somewhere in, in that area of the world. And uh, they're really great. They're really good quality. They're just tiny. Not what I expected. My That's on me. That's not anyone's fault but myself. So not a big deal. All right. I'm going to turn off stamp cam. So now we're going to have to have a stamp. We're going to have to have a stamping um, stream. I think Thursday. My box from Jet Pins still hasn't come yet. I need to talk to them just to see. I know the, I know why it hasn't come. But if it doesn't come for Thursday stream, I think we're just going to sticker my laptop. I'm going to bring all my, I keep a bin of stickers. Like I have a little tray full of stickers and we'll pick out stickers and we'll, we'll get my laptop co covered up in stickers. <clears throat> um, tomorrow's podcast, we're going to do a big ass TPA catch up. We've been piling up the questions for weeks now and hadn't had a chance to get to them between talking with, uh, Anna two weeks ago or three weeks ago and Adina last week. Um, all of our Ask TPA questions just keep piling up. So we're going to do a bunch of Ask TPA. Do y'all have any more? Anything else we should talk about? Um, I won't be ready to talk about the Waldman experience on the podcast. We'll do that once I get some time to ink the pens up and play with them. How's the concrete? I saw your uh, question. I'm going to have to check in with Jonathan and find out. Had a meeting. What did, I, what did you miss? All right, we got to show Tony what he missed. At least the one thing. I am going to put this on YouTube now. You missed gigantic ink bottle stamp, Tony. That's what you missed. So I had that made. It's really cool. So it's based off the sailor design, if you couldn't tell. So I'll, I'll stamp it up at home this afternoon and see what we can do. And then I unboxed, I have five Waldman fountain pens or four Waldman fountain pens and one ballpoint sitting over here on the floor that we went through. I'm not going to go all those again. How's the Vanishing Point just started the podcast where you got it still on episodes from 2012. Still love the Vanishing Point. It's ended up being one of my favorite pens ever. And that one I bought 
was the black matte um, fountain pen. I ended up selling it, but that turned in, I sold it because I that ended up turning into like five other vanishing points. So I'm a huge fan of the vanishing point. And thanks for picking up the podcast and, and start from the beginning. I think that's the best thing to do, even though you're way, 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 way behind. It's still good to start at the beginning because you can kind of see the growth we've had over the years. That's very early on when I got that pen. That wasn't far after the I, I Hate Fountain Pens uh, conversation, so it's definitely changed. I know, right? Spoiler, Spoilers in the chat. <laughs> Let's not spoil everything. Yeah, the Wildmans are going to be interesting. I get asked questions about them, so I talked to luxury brands and got them to... I thought they were going to send me one to check out, and <laughs> they ended up sending me five. And there's a couple that I really kind of like, so we're going to see how it goes. Yeah, the fountain pen like trajectory definitely hockey sticked, you know, in the beginning, which is which is how it how it does. Have I gotten better about the mess they create? These are such good questions, Salty Scott, because absolutely, like I do not care about getting ink on my hands at all anymore. Like it's just a badge of honor now. It just happens. It's going to happen, and you just have to accept that fact. And once I accepted that fact, I couldn't care less about getting ink all over my hands. Like my hands are clean today, but yesterday they were blue from uh, filling up some pens and it just doesn't phase me anymore. And it doesn't bother me like if it's on the nib, you know, if the nib's not like pristine looking like if there's ink all over the nib. I, I had a picture in yesterday's review where the ink was just all over the nib and it just doesn't bother me anymore. So yeah, it, t it took some time to get there, you know, being someone who wants something like nice and clean and orderly fountain, fountain pens are not that thing. Um, thanks, Tony. You always got to be at the top of the top of the board. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see that with kids for sure. Having kids of my own, cats or dogs for me is that a that a, is that an ass Twitch stream? That's dogs all the way. I mean, my dog has his own Instagram feed. What do you think? <laughs> I don't manage it though. My wife runs it. It's just funny. We just take funny pictures of Toby and put him on the internet. He does. He's not. A, he's not a. He's not a dogs of Instagram influencer. He just. Uh, he's just funny. So we want to share him sometime. He's silly. So. <clears throat> but yeah, I have completely gotten over the mess of fountain pens. So it won't be. It'll be a few years before you get to, get to this one. Salty Scott. But this was in like, I don't know, like within the last 10 episodes. This is a Sailor Rialo that I have a needle point grind on and I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm, I have time to game today. What are you thinking, No Man's Sky? I haven't played No Man's Sky since the last one. I've been playing Borderlands. Borderlands came out last week. I said I wasn't going to stream that. It's actually might be a pretty decent stream game. Um, they have internet inter interactive chat overlays and things like that. But I still think No Man's Sky is kind of like just the better hangout game but yeah i'll probably have an hour or so we can pop in fly around the galaxy still haven't found that great planet where i can start like officially call home but i don't know we'll see we'll see we kind of did the uh the nuts and bolts of today's stream uh thursday just depends on just depends on shipments if the jet pins one comes in or not because if it does we're gonna uh we're gonna do that oh is uh Mr. Madison playing Borderlands 3. I need to add him on my friends list. I think he's on there. Metropolitan is a good, good pen. I love the nibs on those. Yeah, Borderlands is a fun game. Maybe we'll try that. See if y'all like it on stream. I don't care whether we play it or not. Like I, I just want to play what y'all enjoy watching and chatting about and having fun with. Um, no Man's Sky seems to be kind of the winner for all those things right now. Forger. Forger is a good game. I have 8 out of 9 Palette Metros inked right now. Do you keep... Um, yeah, I'm playing PS4 as well on Borderlands. Do you keep different nibs, Love Loveless, in, in the Metros? What's the reasoning for 8 of them? Colors, nib styles. I mean, obviously you enjoy them. Um, but do you have reasons why you do that why you have eight and are they do you know like okay this one is my note-taking pen this one is my underlining pen you know 
things like that. This one is my letter writing pen. Or do you just like wing it and go? I'm just I'm just curious because that's a lot. But that's a good pen. How long does it take for cartridges to dry out? Have they been punctured or not? If they've been punctured, they'll dry out in a couple of months. Like if they're in your pen and not used, but the air is getting out there. All the colors. Love it. That's perfect. I think that's fantastic. All the colors. That's great. And the fine nib's the best. So, hey, you're just winning all the way around. Um, yeah, if you puncture a cartridge in a pen and that pen doesn't have a good sealing system in the cap, like platinums have good sealing systems in the cap, if you do that, like if you use a platinum, it could be a year or two the way that cap seals off and makes that seal more airtight. Whereas something like a Kaveco Sport, which is not airtight even remotely, you put a cartridge in that and you just sit it there, you can, um, it will evaporate in a matter of months. It's not a fast thing. Can I switch nibs on my Metro? It's a little thick for me right now on the medium. Yes, they pull out. So the nib and the feed, you just kind of give it a little twist and pull out like that. And they will swap out. But the problem is, whoops, wrong button. The problem is the metros are so inexpensive, it's going to cost you as much for the nib as just buying a new pen. That's why Love Loveless has eight of them, or nine of them, with eight of them inked. Um, because it depends, like if you can find like a um, pilot penmanship is an extra fine nib and a pilot plumix is a stub nib, yeah, that's what Tony's saying right now. They're, how much are those? Five, six bucks? And you steal the nibs from them to put into the Metropolitans. That's what I've done plenty of times. Plus they have extra fine. Yeah, why not buy it in a different color? I mean, the nib, if you try to buy a Pilot Steel nib, it's going to cost you more than, a, it's going to cost you as much as just buying a new Metropolitan, honestly. $10 for what, Tony? The penmanship? And what size nibs do those come in? Only extra fine, or have they expanded that lineup? Yeah, so if you want extra fine, which is very needly, which you may want, it's like the fine is really good, but the only nib option, which is what I use, the extra fines and the penmanship. So I'll pay $10 for the penmanship, steal the nib out of it, and then put it in other pilot pens because they're just expensive to buy the nibs. If you can even buy them, that's the problem. It's, you, it's hard to even buy. How would you store fountain pen nibs so they don't get damaged? Flat in a box, any kind of container. They're not gonna get damaged. Just don't set things on top of them. Like mine are in little, uh, little tubes, like ink sample vials, like Tony's saying. Little plastic vials, drop them in there, throw the tube in a box, that's it. Like I have a cigar box that's filled with tubes when all the tubes are filled with nibs. They're not gonna get damaged that way. They're very strong. Unless you do something aggressive to a fountain pen nib, you're not gonna damage it. You can, like technically you can damage it, but it's gonna it takes more than you think to really hurt a fountain pen nib. And you can pick up those ink sample vials. Just look for different like plastic vials on Amazon. You can probably get like 20 of them for a few bucks. They're definitely cheap. <clears throat> the Kakuno, that's right. Since they raised the price of the Metro, I forget they raised the price of the Metropolitan. So the Metropolitans are now like 20 something dollars, right? It used to not be as big of a deal to just buy a new Metropolitan for the nib, but I forgot they raised the price on them. So the Kakuno is now the cheaper version, around 16 bucks, 15 bucks. I hadn't clicked your link, but how do you clean a fountain pen? Mostly run it up oh, 12.50 on the Kakuno. That's a deal. You just gotta like smiley nibs if you're gonna put it in your Metropolitan. Yep, rubber bulb syringe and a lot of water. So you just run it under the sink. I don't have a good display pen here. Like this one won't work uh, for that. But just unscrew it, take out the cartridge when it's empty, throw the cartridge away unless you well, throw the cartridge away. And then you run the nib and the unit under the warning. Good morning, John. Um, 
run the nib under the water. If you can squeeze like through a, uh, you know, like a nasal aspirator, that's what I use. You can just buy them at the store, buy them at Amazon. And uh, you'll see it's really just running things under water and the aspirator gives you the pressure to push the ink through the nib and the feed. And you just do that until the water runs clear instead of whatever color you had in there, blue, black, pink, whatever. But yeah, there's a million posts on cleaning fountain pens. Do not overthink it. Like it needs to be done and it's easy to do well. So don't let cleaning a fountain pen intimidate you. It's very simple and it needs to be done. Like if you're changing inks, you need to do it. If your pen's been sitting there for a couple of months, you need to do it. Um, it's gonna make the performance of the pen better unless your name is Mike and then give it a good six or nine months and then consider cleaning it. Maybe do it, maybe don't up to you, but no, most people clean their fountain pens regularly. It's just good pen. Good pen hygiene makes for good writing experience. Very easy. Does Mike not clean his? It varies. <laughs> he gets in ruts where it will be, the it'll be like six months sometimes he'll leave them in a he'll have the problem is getting too many fountain pens inked not using them and then forgetting about cleaning them so who here subscribes to pen world is it worth it um i always enjoy the issues i get at the shows but i've never subscribed to it so i, I don't know it's hard to say i don't even know what the subscription runs these days so I'll get like one issue a year and I'll read it and it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like, maybe I should support it, but I've, I've just never like dug into it. Orange ink, orange ink does get crystal boogers sometimes. What was the, the Mont Blanc Lucky Orange has been my worst orange ink for crud, nib crud. Generally, as many oranges as I use, I don't run into too many problems except the Lamy Lucky Orange. That one's been a bit of a bear. I have to really watch that one when I use it. And I, I enjoy it because I get it in the in the short international cartridges. So, like, I'll pop it in all kinds of pens all the time. But it kind of... Hmm. They do good articles. Yeah. But I've had less orange crud. Orange and red, though, are the ones, right? That's the ones that are supposedly... Well, not supposedly, but are the, the way the, the ink cruds up on the pens. For sure. Yeah, I always enjoy the profiles and the interviews in Pinworld. They do a good job. The photography's great. I think we're going to have a not case in the Christmas issue, holiday issue. I think we might. I think I gave them some cases. Yeah, nib creep is nothing to worry about. It's just where the tines of the, um, tines of the pen, which you're not going to be able to see this at all, I'm sure. So the slit up the pen and the breather hole sometimes ink just goes through there because you know that part's always flexing it's always kind of splitting open so sometimes the neat the ink just gets up on top of the nib and there's nothing wrong with it it's just a visual thing but that's what really all that nib nib creep is so it's nothing to concern yourself with like it was one of those things i had to learn in the beginning is like why is the ink on the top of my pen nib like it shouldn't be there it's not supposed to be there and make it go away and it turns out it just happens and it's a non-issue. Like, I don't think you can, I don't get a lot of split on this nib because it's a needle point. So I'm not really spreading the tines very much. <sighs> yeah, pretty soon you won't even notice it. And you'll go, it'll be more of, ooh, that's a pretty color. Then why is this ink there? So you'll eventually stop cleaning it. You can't stop it. It'll just, you know, and some inks are different. You know, it depends. It depends on the ink. Most of my nibs don't do that. It's not like a common thing, but it's not that uncommon either. So a lot of it depends on the ink. It depends on if the nib is getting banged around when you're not using it, like as you know, the pen in a book bag or something, and it's getting sloshed around a little bit more, and a little bit more ink gets behind the feed between the nib. So, so yeah, yeah. With the sailor nibs, it like kind of 
rolls through the, the scroll work and like I've had nibs that look like they have this blue trim to it. So you'll get used to it. I used to try to, I used to consistently try to wipe it off with a paper towel and that's just a losing battle. Like you might get it once or twice You go, yay, I got it. And then it'll come back. Like you won't even worry about it before too long. I promise. water day only because i forgot my coffee yeah it took me a while to accept it you know just like cleaning and just like getting ink on your fingers it's a process and once you figure that out and you're off to the races and you won't even consider these things anymore like you won't even think about it <clears throat> for sure but it's a process it takes time just keep using it clean your fountain pens yeah paper towel like like that was going to be a good idea but i still tried wet it fight it you know I'd, I'd twist it just to get a little point on it right so you can just kind of push it down push it down the line and keep it really clean and nice and neat man i used to obsess over that stuff <clears throat> you get over it pretty quick but you just got to keep using your pens once you realize that you're enjoying the fountain pen for the writing experience it gives you none of that stuff will matter anymore so a stub nib is basically a nib instead of that goes to a point like this it's just like a flat straight across so it makes like a blocky type of lettering which most of my handwriting is like a block style lettering if you look at the review i did yesterday that's a stub nib and that's what the output looks like <clears throat> i'll show you So go here and go to the written reviews and you can see how the line is kind of the horizontal and vertical lines are wide and then the uh, I mean so the horizontal lines are thin the vertical lines are wide so it's basically square yeah great job with the uh... Kimmy are you left-handed that's always the first First question I ask when someone says I can't write with a stub. But I get it. It's a different experience. You can't write. It sometimes takes a little bit of a different motion and a different angle and a different grip. I think it's harder for left-handed to write with a stub nib. Yeah. It depends on how you grip it. <laughs> because of the angle of the nib like if you're if you're a, a hooker if you hook the pen when you write you're going to have a different angle the nib's going to be at a different angle and so unlike a standard nib which generally has tipping i know hooker right that that's going to get me flagged somewhere um yeah you write from the top so you're like a, you're a hooker essentially anna taught me that y'all y'all go yell at her or Mike said, "I'm a what was the title of that one sh one podcast? I'm a lefty overhooker or something like that." Um, yeah, so if you write from the top, you're a hooker, and um, it changes the angle of the nib against the paper. So yeah, you may not like a stub nib. It's something you should test before you buy to see. Your heavy hand and a side writer. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. We, we've probably approved hookers long time ago in chat <laughs> there's enough lefties to lefties to get that oh yeah that's true so you'll have to you'll have to type it in calligraphy nut and see if it gets modded it might yeah big hub week friday is that the 20th i'll be doing the relay fm charity stream yeah i mean it's mandatory for a lot of left-handers that's just how you learn like it's you know it's kind of you have to or you're just going to be tortured with just smudging and and mess yep it got blocked <laughs> first time hub master good for you congratulations that's awesome it's getting bigger and and better and more awesome every year 
are they still are they still sending out full ink bottles for like everyone i, I imagine that's got to end at some point that's a lot of ink i would imagine let's change this to samples of ink so what are they can you tell can you tell us what they sent full bottles really man that's awesome is it star ruby is that the ink of the year question mark so that's pretty cool oh and the full set that i have heard star ruby cool yeah there's one in atlanta it is at the taco mac on sandy hill i cannot be there but um uh, <laughs> dallas's hub master has gone mia awesome awesome i wonder if they have a good size one i don't know i don't know enough about the dallas one <clears throat> yeah uh taco mac sandy springs i can give you the the hub master's info for sure she's super great she uh we send her some stuff from knock to give away there so that's cool that's the only one i know of um it's either there or nashville you're closer to atlanta <laughs> i should do one it like theoretically fresno has one nice it's Friday night, Blaine. I don't know what time. Seven o'clock. It's in my email. Um, I could do one in Macon because one of the biggest, one of the biggest Pelican collectors, uh, uh, Dan Langan, is in is in Macon. He has essentially a Pelican Pelican museum in his house that I've been to, but it'd be just me and him, <laughs> me and Dan <laughs> doing the Pelican Hub. Uh, y'all see him at the uh, Atlanta Pin Show. He doesn't bring all his Pelican stuff there, though. <laughs> that stuff literally stays in the in the museum at the house. I haven't been over to his new house though. He moved. I'm like, he had basically a whole like his living room was all Pelican like display cabinets and like all vintage Pelican like literally like an entire room. It was literally like a Pelican museum. But you know. I'd just go to Atlanta if I wanted to do it. And I, I've just never had time. I've just never been able to do it on a Friday night. That's hard for me to get to make into Atlanta on a Friday night. That's just, you're, I'm just asking for trouble. And I got something going on this weekend anyway, or this Friday. So that'll be fun. Yeah, the Rhodia paper is always a good beginner fountain pen. I mean, it's a good all around notebook, but it's a good, if you're like, using specifically fountain pens and you know you want good experience on a paper i prefer rhodia for that i use it constantly not getting the rhodia web notebook i'm fine with that the rhodia web notebook is not my favorite but all the rhodia pads i use just constantly i'd rather drive to macon than smyrna i don't blame you stacy are you going I'm going to have to make it one of these years. So, okay. Me, Stacy, and Dan then. Or Stacy and Baron and Dan. That's four of us for making. No, not going. Yeah. I'm not going to do it and make it. Like, don't even get me started. I just will not, will not do. I, I just don't have time to be Pelican Hub, Hub Master. Denver's is 88 people. Woof. That's awesome. What type of uh, what type of location do you do they have the the eighty eight people at? Restaurant, hotel, ballroom. What type of facility? And are you gonna overrun it? I know some people get over into the hundreds. Yeah, big. Everyone's getting the Galaxy Note ten ad today. At a bar, nice. Back room grandma's house i love it that's awesome jesse you're gonna get to go nice 42 yeah taco mac i'm trying to i'm i'm recruiting for for it sarah are you going this year sarah I don't like the ivory in the uh, the web notebook either. The I like the white pages of the the uh, other stuff. Oh, good. Well, I, I I expect a full report report back. So that'll be cool. One of these years I'll make it.
I mean, they make um, they make pads without spirals. Just standard staple pads. Ink tasting or ink testing? It's two different things. That doesn't surprise me, Tony. You don't seem like a hope guy. <clears throat> oh, like a paper tasting where you, you sample them all. Is, um, is, is that a pelican driven thing the ink tasting like is pelican providing the the supplies and the i the concept behind that and sending the cards from the hub or is that just something like local is going to do that organizers cool that's a great idea i love it yeah that's very cool smart idea I like, I got a package from uh, Anna the other day and she just threw in like a ink sample, like a coloring ink sample. I thought that was the coolest thing. Just random ink swatch. I was like, cool. I like that. Plus I like the ink. That was cool. Mm. I wonder what's the, do we, do we know which one's the biggest hub? maybe one in germany or somewhere in europe or did any of the u.s ones break 100 i'm sure we're pretty close i'm sure some of them might they have like manila that makes sense denver in the top 10 nice because they always list it right either before or after like what the uh three thousand people that's crazy that's life goals right there <laughs> oh <laughs> I should have looked I should have considered the source. Yeah, I wasn't thinking there. Yeah, they always publish the list and I always forget what it was. Need to need to uh change it in the subject. I need to figure out this London pen show thing that's happening. Why does sheening ink take so long to dry? Because it needs time to like actually set up and to allow those properties to come out. Come out. I don't know the exact like 